Hello, welcome to chapter 3, section 4, linear programming. We're going to do things a little bit different with um, the way that I set this up. Usually I do the examples that are in the book, I explain things step by step, and then I do the uh, guided practice problems. For this section, I'm actually going to just do linear programming problems. Um, I'm going to do, I've got four ready to go. So I'm going to make four videos, and um, I'll make more if I look at it and see that there's a couple more that I might want to make. And then I'll have um, a couple other things prepared for you so that you can see that, on, and I'll uh, post that on Schoology. So I'm going to do each of these problems, um, the examples that I have, I'm going to do each of them from start to finish. All right. These involve multiple steps. Please feel free to pause the video at any time, rewind it if you didn't catch something. And as always, I will take pictures of uh, all the pieces of paper that I'm writing and upload those as you know slides so you can look at it at your leisure. All right, so uh, that being said, let's get started. So a shoe company produces two different types of shoes, models of shoes, an athletic shoe and a dress shoe. Now right away, and I'm going to be making comments as I read it, okay? And again, if you want to pause it and read it yourself, that'd be great. I'm going to be making comments as I, as I read it. Right away, that doesn't seem to make sense. So I'm going to ask you right now just to roll with it. Most companies are going to produce more than two types of different things, all right? So this company decides that they're only going to produce two types of shoes an athletic shoe and a dress shoe okay so probably some sort of sneaker slash basketball slash tennis shoe or maybe it's a cross training shoe and something you're going to wear when you dress up all right maybe a wingtip who knows and if you don't know what a wingtip is ask your ask your um ask your parents or maybe ask your grandpa okay <laughs> all right the athletic shoe requires six minutes of manufacturing time to make. So again, I'm gonna make a comment about that. That doesn't seem like a lot of time, but for like a major factory that's you know cranking these things out, six minutes might be like total while they're making like a lot of shoes on an assembly line. This athletic shoe generates a profit of $8. So what that means is that they sell it for a price we don't know but if you subtract out the manufacturing cost so the material cost um, wages for the employees who are working any machinery costs any other costs then you end up with a profit of eight dollars all right that's good to know now the dress shoe requires four minutes of manufacturing time and it generates a profit of nine dollars all of these numbers we're leaving here we're not erasing them Okay, they're gonna, we're gonna have to come back and look at them. Now the manufacturing line runs at most 12 hours each day. So maybe from like, you know, seven o'clock in the morning till seven o'clock at night, or some other time, it doesn't matter. Maybe they're not up yet to where they can run their line 24 hours a day, we don't know. But it runs at most 12 hours each day. That means it can go up to 12 hours, but not over 12 hours. Anything under 12 hours would also be okay. Now, because of the demand, the company manufactures at least twice as many of the athletic shoes as it does the dress shoes. So if it produces one pair of dress shoes, it makes two pair of athletic shoes, or more than that. If it makes two dress shoes, two pair of dress shoes, sorry, because it, they usually come in pairs in a box, right? If you just, uh, make two pairs of dress shoes, then it's going to make at least four pairs of athletic shoes. So whatever the athletic shoes is, I'm gonna double the number of dress shoes. And that's, oh sorry, to, I'm gonna double the number of dress shoes and that'll tell me how many athletic shoes I'm gonna have. That'll be important later too. So it says, what's the maximum profit that can be generated in one day? Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We first have to define the variables. Now, we've had this discussion a couple times about what letters to use for our variables. You can use A for athletic shoe and D for dress shoe. That's perfectly okay. However, 
we probably will be using some sort of technology to graph this. In this example, I'm actually going to graph it by hand, so it really won't matter. But if we do switch over to Desmos and you graph it, then you're going to have to use X and Y in order to let Desmos know what you're talking about. So that's what I'm going to go with, all right? So the first thing I do is I say let X represent the number of athletic shoes. Again, basketball shoes, sneakers, whatever they are, whatever you want to call them, all right? And let Y represent the number of dressier shoes. Shoes that you're going to wear if you're wearing a suit or something similar to that. All right. So now that I've defined the variables, I can now set up my constraints. And that's going to be my next sheet here. And I'm going to keep switching back to show you the other stuff, All right? So we have a couple of constraints. There's a manufacturing constraint. What that means is that there's only so much time during the day that the company can manufacture shoes. And if we go back and look at that, that's right here. The time that it takes to manufacture all the shoes cannot be more than 12 hours. It can be less than 12 hours, but it cannot be greater than 12 hours. And it can also be up to 12 hours. So it could, if, they, if they're exactly at 12 hours, that works too. But according to this, you can't go over 12 hours. So now I need to figure out, well, how long does it take to manufacture both types of shoe? Well, it tells me right here. The athletic shoe takes six minutes and the dress shoe takes four minutes. So, for the manufacturing, each athletic shoe takes six minutes. So one would be six, two would be 12, three would be 36, four would be 48. Okay, oh, I'm sorry, I got ahead, I got ahead of myself. Let me say that again. One would be six, two would be 12, three would be 18. Sorry, I was starting to multiply by 12, I don't know what I was doing. Four would be 24. So I'm multiplying how many shoes you're gonna make by six. I'm going to make X number of shoes. So I'm going to multiply that by six. That's going to give me the time that it takes to manufacture the athletic shoes. Now coming back to my picture or my original problem, the dress shoe requires four minutes of manufacturing time. So one would be four, two would be eight, three would be 12, so forth. So I'm multiplying the number of shoes by four minutes. And that's going to be four times what? Four times y, excuse me. Now, the time that it takes to do the uh, dress, uh, athletic shoes plus the time it takes to do the dress shoes, I was like a step ahead of myself. I'm going to add those minutes together, and that has to be less than or equal to 12 hours. But wait, before I say 12 hours, remember, I'm talking about minutes here. I can't put a 12 down. I have to make sure I'm using the same unit. So this is going to be 12 times 60 minutes in an hour. So it's actually going to be 720 minutes. Remember, this is all in minutes. So be mindful of that. Be mindful of what um, a measuring unit you're talking about. All right. So now let's talk about the demand. I mentioned this when I, when I read it. We talked a little bit about it. There has to be twice as many athletic shoes as dress shoes. So, if there's one dress shoe that they make, or one pair, sorry, there we go, I did it again. I'm going to get two athletic shoes. So I take this and multiply it by two. If they make 30 pairs of dress shoes, two times 30 is going to be 60. All right, so what I'm finding out is that if I know the number of dress shoes, which is why, I'm going to multiply that by two, and that's going to give me the max, or sorry, the minimum, excuse me, the minimum number of athletic shoes. So it looks like the number of athletic shoes has to be greater than or equal to double the number of dress shoes. All right. Now I know that that's really, really difficult, so rewind that and listen to that again. The number of shoes, athletic or dress, cannot be negative. So I know that X has to be greater than or equal to zero, and Y has to be greater than or equal to zero. You can't have a negative number of shoes. 
So these are my constraints. I have a constraint in the time that it takes me to manufacture. I only have 720 minutes to manufacture these shoes. That's 12 hours. I have a constraint for the demand. The number of athletic shoes has to be more or greater, I'm sorry, greater than or equal to double the number of dress shoes. And I have two logical constraints here, even though it's not explicit in the problem, but it's just impossible to have a negative number of shoes. Negative numbers don't, don't work that way, okay? So now the next part, we're going to graph these boundary lines and graph these inequalities. So let's start off with this one. I can actually, and I'm gonna do it right here. So if I do the boundary line, I'm gonna do 6x plus 4y, and this is the boundary line, equals 720. After I graph the boundary line, I'll decide which way to shade it, okay? So if I let x equal zero, I get 4y equals 720, and if I divide by four, I gotta double check that, I think that's 180. y equals 180. Okay, I'm gonna calculate and double check that clear. So 720 divided by 4, yep, 180. I got that right. So I'm going to we'll graph my y-intercept at 180. So here's 150, 160, 170, and 180 right there. Got my ruler. I'm going to need my ruler. Now, if I let y equal 0, I get 6x equals 720. And if I divide by 6, I get y equals 120. And again, if you don't believe me, 720 divided by 6 equals 120. And that is my, excuse me, I, I said x, but I meant to say, right, y, I'm sorry, I wrote y. So here's 100, 110, 120 right there. All right, cool. Now, so I graph this using the intercept method. I'm going to use my ruler and draw the line. I know that this is a solid line, which in the context of the problem means you can be at exactly 12 hours or 720 minutes. Now here's the cool part. I know that I can pick 0, 0 or some, or some bigger number up here, okay? It kind of makes sense that if this line represents the time constraint, I can be less than this but not above it. So however you want to do it, you can pick points on both sides. We've done this before. You can solve this for the y, um, the y variable, the, the dependent variable. And then you, oh, not this one, but actually this one. If I do solve it, I'm not going to switch the sign and I'm going to end up with less than. But watch what I do when I graph. All I'm going to do is I'm going to put little marks on the bottom of this graph to represent that I'm sh going to shade below it. What that means is that I'm aware of the fact that I have three more constraints to graph and I don't want a bunch of lines going all over the place. That's going to be a mess. So I know that this triangle right here is going to be shaded, right? And by the way, how do I know it's the triangle? Because I can't be in any of these other quadrants. I'm going to stop at the axes. So I also know I can go ahead and do these two. I'm going to be above the x-axis because the y is positive, and I'm going to be on this side of the y-axis because I know the x is going to be positive. So it's going to be somewhere in this triangle. The only thing is I have another constraint. And this other constraint is not in slope intercept form. So I'm gonna put it in slope intercept form. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it around. And hopefully, I'm gonna move this so you can see it. So I've got x is greater than or equal to 2y. I'm just gonna turn it around. And when I turn it around, I have to turn around the sign also. And I'm going to divide by two. So I get y is less than or equal to 1 half times x. So my boundary line is y equals 1 half x. So that means that my y-intercept is 0, because it's plus 0, and my slope is 1 half. Now, if you notice in my graph, I'm going by tens. So you're not going to go up 1 over to, to, I'm sorry, never say over, up 1 and to the right 2. But I can go up 10 and write 20. Up 10 and write 20. So it looks like my new line is going to be right here, my new boundary line. All right. 
and I can check a point on either side. If I do that, I can also look, I see that I am below this. So it looks like I'm going to be below this line. And if I'm above this, below above the y equals zero, if I'm below the manufacturing time and I'm above this ratio or demand time, then that means that my feasible region is going to be this triangle right here, and that's what I'm going to fade, uh, shade in. Now I can check all of this with Desmos. The only thing about Desmos is that, like we did, I showed you in class, you're going to see all of the different shading. Desmos doesn't know that you only want to show part of it unless you figure out how to make it do that. And you can, but that's kind of beyond what I'm expecting you guys to do. All right, cool. So... For all of the whole number points in here, which what I mean is that you can't have fractions of a shoe. That, that's going to be important in just a moment, all right? For all of the whole number um, points in here, this is what's possible, all right? So I'm going to have the fact that the dress shoes are going to be less than half of the athletic shoes. I'm also going to be under my manufacturing time, and I'm also not going to have any negative number of shoes. So. Now the next thing I need to do is figure out how many of each do I make so that I can get the maximum amount of profit. Okay, we'll look at it this way, all right? Think of this as all of the choices that I have stretched out to the extreme. So I've got a corner here, a corner here, and a corner here. Because this is a triangle, those corners we call the vertices. Now the book kind of like glosses over this a little bit because it really becomes kind of some advanced math. It might even be calculus. but Basically, there's a theorem that says that if you want to find the, about the maximum or minimum of, of an objective function, it's got to be in one of these vertices because these are the extremes, right? The furthest to the left I can go is this. The furthest to the right I can go is here, and the furthest up I can go is here. And there might also be some other extremes when I combine going left or right, right? But basically, I'm going to look at the vertices. So if I was doing this in de decimals, I would tap them, and it would be able to tell me what it is. Okay, so I'm doing it on paper. So what I have to do is I can figure out this one, zero, zero. That means you're going to make zero athletic shoes and zero dress shoes. You're going to be in under time and you're going to meet the, you're going to meet the double demand. But obviously that doesn't make sense. Another option would be if you have 120 athletic shoes and zero dress shoes. So maybe you commit to making just all athletic sho shoes. The third option is this one right here, and it's kind of hard to tell what it is based upon my graph, but it looks like it's about 90 for the x value, and if I cut across here, it looks like it's halfway between 40 and 50, so we think it's maybe 90-45. Maybe. So here's my dilemma. I think that one's pretty obvious that it's zero, zero, all right? It's basically, I know that the y-intercept right here is zero, so that one's good. And I think this one's pretty obvious that it's 120, zero. I figured that out because when I let y equal zero, I got 120. So I know th these two points are good. This one, I kind of have to figure it out based upon the picture. I don't want to do that. I want to make sure that I know exactly what it is. So that leads us to the next step. I need to check the intersection point using either the substitution or the elimination method. So the boundary line for this one is y equals one half x. That's this except with the boundary line. The boundary line for this one, I wrote it right here, 6x plus 4y equals 720. So my system is 6x plus 4y equals 720, and y equals 1 half x. So now I'm going to use either substitution or elimination to figure out what the actual um, xy pair is. Okay. Now this one's set up nice to use substitution. So I'm going to replace the y in the first equation with 1 half x. 6x plus 4 times 1 half x equals 720. 4 times 1 half is 
uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I need to get some water. Four times one half is two, so I get six x plus two x equals 720, and eight x equals 720. Divide by eight, and I get x equals 90. That's good, because that's what I thought it was from my graph. Now I need to find the y value, so I can just go back to my first one. y equals 1 half times 90, and 1 half times 90 is 45. And of course, we should probably check our solutions. This one you can check by, check by just mental math, that's okay. And then you can do 6 times 9, uh, yeah, 6 times 90 plus 4 times 45, and that'll get 720. But, and that's, I'm not saying that that's not important, I'm saying that I'm just trying to save some time. I'm already at 20 minutes. And this is going to go a little bit longer than that. Okay, so here's what I know so far. I was able to come up with my constraints for my, my inequalities for my constraints. I was able to graph it, and I found the vertices of the, re, the uh, feasible region. So, the next thing, I need to figure out what the actual maximum profit is. So I'm going to go back to this, this page. It says... The athletic shoe has a profit of $8. So my profit that I want to maximize, because I want, I want money, each pair of athletic shoes is going to give me $8. So I take 8 and multiply it times how many I sell. Each pair of dress shoes is going to give me a profit of $9. I can charge a little bit more for that. So here's what I'm going to do. My profit function is 8x plus 9y. Now I need to test my vertices. Go back to this one. 0, 0, 90, 45, and 120, 0. So here's my athletic shoes. Here's my dress shoes. I'm going to make a table. I'm going to organize everything by a table. And then this is going to be my profit, 8x plus 9y. So, going back to my graph, I could have 0, 0. Well, obviously, I don't think I'm going to have any profit with that. 8 times 0 plus 9 times 0, that's going to give me nothing. So that, that's a bad plan. I can try 120 of the athletic shoes and none of the dress shoes. 120 and 0. That's 8 times 120 plus 9 times 0, and I wrote it down, that's going to equal $960, okay, which I didn't have, I didn't give myself room for that for the dollar sign, that's okay, this would be my profit in dollars, and the last choice I have would be 9045, so 90 pairs of athletic shoes, 45 pairs of dress shoes, that's 8 times 90, plus 9 times 45. Go ahead and grab your calculator if you want on that one. That's $1,125. And that's where the maximum is going to be. So finally I have to answer the question. How many shoes should I, sh should I have? And what's the maximum profit? So you should produce this company 90 pairs of athletic shoes and 45 pairs of dress shoes. Now one thing that you're probably thinking is why do we go through all of this process to get something that probably seems kind of easy or seems kind of straightforward. I mean if you're only going to get 0, 0 here or 120, 0 here that's fine. Let's just say we started off with an easy problem. All right. It's the process of how we do this that's really, really, really important. And there's going to be one th question that's going to be hanging over our heads a lot that I really want you to think about. I've hinted at it a couple times, and we'll come back to that, hopefully. All right, see you in the next video.